At the heart of America's return to the moon stands a giant. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is one of the most powerful rockets ever built. It's been in development for over a decade and is central to the Artemis program. With each mission, NASA moves closer to landing humans on the lunar surface again, and eventually, Mars. And while its missions so far have relied on hardware originally developed for the space shuttle, NASA's future ambitions demand new technology. That's why the next generation of boosters, called BOL, is so critical. But recently, something went seriously wrong. In this video, we're diving deep into the explosive test failure of NASA's new SLS booster. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on the biggest developments in the space industry. On June 26, 2025, Northrop Grumman performed a major static fire test of the Bull Booster at its test site in Promontory, Utah. This was a full-scale burn test of the Demonstration Motor 1, or DM-1. The test was meant to last two minutes, just like a real launch. For the first 100 seconds, everything looked normal. But then, something went wrong. Flames burst out from the top section of the nozzle. Then, a few seconds later, a large blast of fire and debris shot outward. The entire nozzle violently detached from the motor. Engineers on site reacted with shock, but the test kept running. And incredibly, the 156-foot booster continued firing for the full two-minute duration, producing more than four million pounds of thrust, even with the nozzle missing. This wasn't a total explosion. The internal propellant didn't detonate. That's important. It shows the failure was isolated to the nozzle, not the entire system. But the nature of this failure still raises major concerns, especially because this new booster design is meant to power missions well into the 2030s. The Bull Booster is a key part of the SLS Block II, NASA's upgraded rocket meant for Artemis 9 and later missions. Those missions will carry heavier payloads for extended lunar operations, and eventually human missions to Mars. Right now, NASA's Artemis 1 through Artemis 8 flights still use the original shuttle-based booster hardware, but that legacy hardware only exists in limited quantities, just enough for eight launches. That's why BOL, which stands for Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension, was developed in the first place. It's an upgrade. The BOL booster includes several new features. Its steel casings have been replaced with lightweight carbon fiber composites. It uses a modern propellant called HTPB that handles more strain. It ditches the old hydraulic thrust vector system and uses a fully electronic version called ETVC. The nozzle is also larger, 4.4 meters wide compared to the previous 3.9, and it's designed for better performance. Together, these upgrades were supposed to increase the booster's total performance by over 10%. That's enough to carry five extra tons of payload to the moon. So why did it fail? The test failure occurred around 100 seconds into the burn. A small exhaust plume appeared at the base of the nozzle, followed by debris. Then came the larger burst, which ripped off the entire nozzle at 130 seconds, just 10 seconds before the test was scheduled to end. Even with the nozzle gone, the booster kept firing until the two-minute mark. Engineers had over 700 data channels recording the entire event. That data is now helping them understand exactly what went wrong. Initial reviews suggest that a burn-through may have occurred. That means heat may have compromised part of the nozzle, weakening it until it broke off. This is especially concerning because the nozzle design was brand new meant to improve performance, but now possibly responsible for the failure. This is not Northrop Grumman's first nozzle problem either. Just last year, in 2024, a nozzle detached from a different solid rocket booster, this time during a Vulcan rocket launch. That booster was also built by Northrop Grumman. These two incidents raise the question, is there a broader problem with how these nozzles are designed or built? At this point, the cause of the bowl failure is still under investigation. But NASA and Northrop Grumman are clear. The test gave them valuable data. A second test is already planned, with different conditions to further examine how the booster performs. Still, there's no doubt this setback will require a major redesign, especially of the nozzle section. That could mean delays, added costs, and more questions about the program's future. So how does this affect Artemis? In the short term? It doesn't. Artemis 1 through 8 will still fly with the original boosters, 
but Artemis 9 and beyond are supposed to rely on the bowl design. If major changes are needed, timelines for those later missions could slip, possibly by years. NASA already estimates Artemis 9 won't launch until 2034. Delays from this failure could push that even further. This is a technical, political, and a financial challenge, too. The SLS program has faced massive cost overruns for years. Each launch costs over $4 billion, and the total program has gone more than $6 billion over budget. In fact, the U.S. Government Accountability Office recently called the program unaffordable. To make matters worse, the White House's 2026 budget proposal calls for canceling the SLS rocket and the Orion capsule after Artemis III. The plan is to rely more on commercial options, especially SpaceX's Starship. Starship is not without its own delays, but it promises much lower costs, high reusability, and flexibility for future missions. That's something SLS can't currently match. The bowl failure, coming at this moment of high scrutiny, gives even more weight to the argument for shifting away from government-developed heavy-lift rockets. But there's another side to this. Space history shows that test failures like this are part of progress. Whether it was early space shuttle solid rocket boosters or today's experimental designs, every new system faces setbacks. What matters is how teams respond. NASA and Northrop Grumman are using this event to study how the nozzle failed, collect as much information as possible, and improve the design. The fact that the booster kept firing, despite a major structural failure, means it didn't explode uncontrollably. That's actually a sign of strength in the core design. Space enthusiasts and experts are debating this online, and opinions are split. Some see it as proof the program is unreliable. Others point out that learning from failures is a necessary part of engineering. What's clear is that NASA will have to be transparent, act fast, and show measurable improvements to keep public and political support. Looking at history, the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster reminds us what's at stake. That tragedy stemmed from a failure in a solid rocket booster joint and was made worse by ignored warnings. While the bowl failure is different, it shows how even a small design decision, meant to improve performance, can introduce hidden risks. Meanwhile, SpaceX has also faced a major incident with its Starship program. On June 18, 2025, the Starship prototype known as Ship 36 exploded during a static fire test at Starbase, Texas. The rocket was filled with methane and liquid oxygen when a pressurized nitrogen tank, known as a COPV, apparently failed inside the nose section. This led to a violent explosion that tore the vehicle apart, though no one was hurt and the test area remained clear of personnel. SpaceX issued a statement calling it a major anomaly and said the COPV failure was an unprecedented event for this design. Preliminary findings suggest this tank failure may have triggered the explosion. Elon Musk noted this design hadn't failed before, making this a critical point for investigation. The incident destroyed the test vehicle and will likely delay upcoming launches, including what was planned as the 10th flight test. This explosion comes after several setbacks in Starship's development this year. Earlier prototypes had already failed during flights in January, March, and May. In May's ninth test flight, the booster successfully returned, and the upper stage nearly reached orbital velocity, but ended in a destructive breakup. These events show a pattern of repeated testing and failure, as SpaceX works to refine its fully reusable super-heavy rocket. Despite these incidents, SpaceX continues to move forward. The FAA has now approved up to 25 Starship launches per year from Starbase, up from just five, signaling regulatory confidence in SpaceX's ability to manage environmental and safety concerns. Plans are already underway to build a second launch pad at Cape Canaveral's SLC-37, doubling launch capacity and creating redundancy to speed up the Starship test tempo. In parallel, SpaceX maintains a record-breaking operational tempo. Its Falcon 9 rockets launched missions like AX-4, a private crew flight to the ISS, and regularly deployed Starlink satellites. On June 25th, the Falcon 9 produced a spectacular nebula-like ring during its boostback burn, creating a visual highlight across the night sky. That was it for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.